Bruce Lawn. Hillsong episode three and four of the FX series called Hillsong Secrets. I watched it. John Keith watched it. So you wouldn't have to. And if I'm honest with you guys, man, this was a doozy. This was tough. This was a tough one to watch. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Uh, I watched season uh, episode one and two last week, and this week we j- literally just finished watching episodes three and four. And we'll tell you the good, the bad, the ugly of this whole debacle. Episode three basically picks up where episode two leaves off with going deeper in Brian Houston's dad's alleged cover up with regards to all the essay allegations okay and then episode four uh comes back to carl lentz's story and kind of gives us an update where he is now and so we're going to cover most of that but uh john keith what did you think about this entire show man (laughs) yep (laughs) yep man it, it was just so oh man it was like so Exhausting. Yeah, it's exhausting. You know what I'm saying? There's so many thoughts during it. It's like, this is extremely unfortunate. And also at the same time, it's like, there's a narrative uh, just around certain things with, with you know, church culture or even Carl Lentz himself. And I feel like, okay, this is kind of just an opportunity to take more shots at the church. Um, but it mainly it was just heartbreaking just yeah. man just for the most part it was just like dang mm-hmm. son i mean you know what i'm saying brian houston always seemed kind of schmucky to me but but this is crazy <laughs> you call him schmucky yeah just a little bit schmucky all right so episode three they go deep on his dad's essay coming to find out that there's multiple survivors multiple folks that came out and gave testimony and the way it looks allegedly is that he knew about this stuff and was legally obligated to report it didn't yeah and this is basically the culture of hillsong so when you look at what happened with linson and nyc mm-hmm. it not, it doesn't shock anybody when you understand the origins of this thing and there was some weird stuff about like the name changing right before they yeah. the dad and then he's like this was way before hillsong but it was the same church it's just a different name yeah. and uh yeah that the entire frank houston sequence was just brutal and i'm curious they say they're gonna put the verdict out in june on if he is going to be guilty of that he could face up to five years in prison for allegedly covering up and 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 they found out that there was a total of 13 victims or survivors of the dad's essay it just sucks when uh people that confess jesus give the world more reasons to throw stones i think that it seems based on the documentary that the entire foundation of this whole thing was not yeah healthy mm-hmm. and i was listening to Jackie Hill Perry on Instagram said some, something interesting. She, I think she was talking about this documentary specifically. And she said, it's interesting that the metric that we use for whether something is successful is always numbers. But sometimes numbers can be the counter of whether something is successful. If you're, lar- if you're drawing large crowds, that may not always mean that people are getting plugged in and getting discipled. Yeah. That just because there's ma- massive crowds, that may actually mean... The opposite is happening. People are coming yeah. for a great show, a good word of encouragement, a oh, hoorah yeah. in Jesus' name. Oh, absolutely. Yet, they may not actually be leaving transformed, leaving equipped, and being discipled to go deeper and live out the gospel. Yeah, I, I you know, a lot of this just confirmed a lot of my uh, unfortunate feelings about mega churches mm. anyways. You mm-hmm. know, I, I went to uh, one of the biggest churches in San Diego for five six years something like that mm-hmm. um and yeah it was the same thing like i i actually and me i was a kid i was like 17 mm-hmm. and i was going to church leadership and being like there's no discipleship here mm-hmm. like there's and this thing is a mess there's so much you know and mind you it, I, it wasn't done with any uh tact yeah. or like diploma <laughs> diplomacy like it was just I was a zealous kid mm-hmm. who did see a genuine problem mm-hmm. 
and then probably came off very prideful and, and uh, you know, zealous. But that was another, like, I, I related to a lot of the things yeah. that, that were in that. There was yeah. all kinds of stuff going on. There was, you know, saying, pastors leaving with other people's wives, and there was kids smashing in the, in the you know, ch- children's rooms and all. It was mm. all kinds of nonsense. Mm. And I would be like, yeah, this is because there's no discipleship here. Yeah. Like, there's tons and tons of... I got a. I was given a a life group at that church uh, after like six months. Mm-hmm. I was seventeen. They gave you a life group. They gave me a life group. <laughs> what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And like yeah. that's kind of the that's kind of yeah. the culture. The culture is like they just mega churches will a lot of times just look for people that are seem super on fire. But it's like there's so there's so much. The Bible lays out so much for church leadership yeah. for us to just be willy nilly. Yeah. Frivolous with it. You yeah. Know? That's good. That's good. Uh, I, I want to highlight some good things in episode four that I thought were good takeaways. Generally speaking, th- this is exhausting. It really is. Watching it was exhausting. I don't know if I would recommend watching it. Like, I, like you're going to walk away spiritually drained from I, it. Hey, yo, I'm so I'm spiritually drained right now to the point where it's physically affected. Like, yeah. I am <laughs> I'm exhausted right now. Yeah. So, uh, but before we do that, guys, I got to show you something pretty interesting. Hey, you want to see something crazy? Over 50% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed. And out of the people that are subscribed, less than 10% actually have their bell notification on so do me a solid please make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure the bell notification is turned on so you don't miss anything we got going here all right peace and smash that like button as well okay here are the positive things if i had to point out any uh lince's wife is the real mvp i said that last time her resilience uh her willingness to work through this stuff her vulnerability in terms of even her current issues with church yeah the way this ended i thought was uplifting to a certain degree yeah. um i'm 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 very again people th- think i'm too charitable i'm optimistic of where carl is gonna go yeah i think carl is seemingly in a space where he humbled himself he went and worked a job he had this one line and he said what did he say he said the people the people, the only people that I need in my life, there's only five of them, and they all have my last name. And yeah. I was like, man, that was that was so good, you know. So I'm hopeful for where he's going to end up in all of this. Yeah. I know folks are tripping because he's a transformation, and that's a whole nother can of worms. But I think where he ends up is going to be is going to be good if he continues doing the work, and it seems like he's really about the work, and yeah. I think that's good. So that was the part where I was like, okay. Um, it seems like he's going to own this recovery process. Mm-hmm. Seems like he's going to own the fact that he's probably going to ha- you know, engage and apologize to a lot of people, which is when pastors usually fall or stuff like this happens, they kind of check out, disengage and don't yeah. always do the work. So I was I was hopeful about that and uh and I didn't think like he I think it may be interpreted this way, but I don't feel like he like threw all of Hillsong and Brian Houston, like all the way under the bus, but he owned that, like, yo, this was a culture thing, and that, you know, instead of talking about dealing with lust, like he needed to go and actually understand the physiology of what was going on in his body and his brain because yeah. of the trauma he experienced as a kid. And I thought those aspects of it yeah. were very, very good. Well, one thing that I didn't like is, is you know, Carl obviously had his moral failures and, um. And they were they were serious, you know. But I think that what they try to do because of that is take it and kind of paint him overall as a, you know, everything that he said from the stage was manipulation, and yep. he was trying to get. Yep. And I, I don't think that's the case. Yeah. I, I don't think that at all. I think that I think that Carl loves Jesus and also was a person who um, struggled deeply with lust and and didn't you know was not dealing with it. Yeah. And a lot of it is is because, you know, um don't know how to deal with it. You know, most people don't uh even if you take away the um sexual abuse that he went through as a child, mm-hmm. like just the 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 things that pornography does yeah. to the human brain is just like yeah. 
It's it, it's not good. It's just terrible. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not good. And I I think in watching this, the <laughs> they, they made it through one episode without bringing up the LGTV community being marginalized and abused by the church, yeah. which was episode three, and then episode four, right back to yeah. the agenda uh, of. Oh, well, yeah. you know, they just, they don't... Uh, well, you know, they don't mess I'm like, with things. Oh, my gosh, man. Yeah, Can not, you just yeah. just tell the story without showing your entire hand that you think all Christians are bad yeah. because they don't affirm this? That was one of the things that so I was annoying. like, dude, I, th I'm not even... <laughs> this is... <laughs> bro, it's like, you know, like, the, yo, the Christian stance, the uh, I'm saying orthodox Christianity holds to Jesus's ethics on or you know saying jesus's yes. uh way of sexual sexual ethics yes. and it's like you're not it's it's you're not, not gonna homophobia. change anybody's not, mind you know bro Come just on. leave it alone so that part of the of of the the show was i would say ex ex extremely annoying i think this is a good cautionary tale in terms of what to avoid i think hillsong you know, dwindling. They said New York campus is down to 500 people. 500. They lost a lot of the campuses. Yeah. They took some little shots at the new guy that took over him. Yeah, what was his name? They did him. That dude. was funny. That was the guy with the beanie and the curls. Him. They were roasting him. Like, why you come after the way yeah. my man's looks? He's, poor Phil is just trying to fix it. He's like, I just put clothes on. He's just trying to fix it. So they were roasting him. Uh, the uh, uh, additional financial mismanagement that came out, that, that was pretty... Uh, that just just did icing on top, uh, you know, spending a ton of money on Louis Vuitton stuff and thousands on skateboards, just all that stuff is just Man. yuck, yuck. That's I, how that's how I felt. Like the entire thing was just yuck in terms of watching it back. My concern is that it paints the church too broadly, yeah, and it creates this all institutions are like the all big institutions are like this all bad and there's some stuff in there that's that's just flat out wrong like if you're at a church and asking you to sign ndas i'm bouncing that's goodbye. not a goodbye that's not a good look um there, so there are certain things that are like yo this is goofy we got to do better with this stuff but there's other stuff like volunteers uh like fill in a blank um uh Go, going in and in, in confessing sin or whatever the things are, right? Yeah. Um, and then that all all instantly being equated to this is conversion therapy and they're trying to do this. And again, it just you they had an axe to grind, I think, with Christianity as a whole. Yeah. And that was unfortunate. Ultimately, I see this genuinely, those folks who watch this, it is so it is so exhausting. It is so dark that I think ultimately it will jolt people if they have issues. Hopefully, to say I don't ever want to end up like Carl Lentz on any level. Yeah, let me go work. Let me go work my junk out. Yeah, let me go work my stuff out. I think that's the potential net positive of this documentary. I think the other side of it is the same way the lady who stopped going to church and so many people left the faith because of this stuff. That's the other side. Of this is that this is going to paint the church in too broad of a of a stroke, and then people are just going to say, "Well, yeah. see, I told you so." They're all like this, and then they're going to attach this to the scandals in the Catholic Church and all these things, and then anything like that is going to just be lumped in, and it's going to be this hasty generalization fallacy about all Christian churches. Yeah, that that that's I, that's the part that I'm just like, dang, bro. Like I feel like we're just getting cooked over here because yep. I'm like. Ah. Bro, I ain't never even been to Hillsong Church. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and <laughs> I've been in the church my whole life. And and it's crazy because I was actually, I was talking to my my pastor and he shared like a uh, a statistic with me that was really unfortunate. I don't remember the numbers, so I'm not going to give the numbers, but it was just a legitimate statistic um, that it's like a really unfortunate percentage of pastors are going to make it to the end of their life without some kind of scandal. Mm. Like, like it's a, it's like an unfortunately small number. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The majority, the majority is going to catch a L. Um, and it's just, you know, I think a lot of it is, is because of our, uh, we like, we want to ignore the things that the scripture lays out for us, you know, regarding church leadership. Yep. And like, man, even right now, like, I feel like, you know, I don't know, man. It, yeah. I, it's changed so much in my opinion on stuff. Yeah. I think 
if I if you had to say is this is this a must watch documentary, I would probably say no. Yeah, I would say no because I think one the spiritual exhaustion I think is just is just is just a lot, and then two, I would say. They did a bait. They did the same bait and switch. And my buddy John McRae had this thought. They did the same bait and switch that they're accusing Hillsong of doing. They try to package this as this like thing that Christians would enjoy, and anyone that's a Christian is going to watch this, especially the last episode and all the all that is yeah. going to be like, bro, you're. They don't get how they they lack the self awareness of how insulting this is to people yeah. that just want to f- follow the Bible. So I would not recommend watching this. I yeah. wouldn't recommend supporting it. Again, we watched it, so you wouldn't have to. And I think that this is ultimately not a net positive in terms no. of the way this is this is packaged together. There's some no. cautionary tale stuff. There's definitely some red flags to look out for. Your church, your church ever try to make you sign an NDA? Mm-hmm. Run if your church is not transparent, not with people's salaries, but it, it, generally speaking of how much is coming in and how funds are getting spent. Run. Um, yeah. Those are the things that I would be cautious with and signs. But I think. Uh, the underlying agenda and what they were trying to push and backdoor and this was just not helpful. It was uh, skillfully done. It was well executed. The quality of it was amazing. The parts that were mo- most interesting to me was watching Carl Lentz on the other side of this and his progress of, of, of this whole thing. Um, it was, yeah, it was good to find out Carl Lentz's side of the story. Uh, I would love to see all of that. F- like, I think they could have just, they, they could drop that on YouTube, just his interviews, like unedited yeah. interviews. And like run the numbers up on those. I think they would crush if they did that. That would really be that 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 that's my final like assessment of it. I don't know if you got a final thing you want to say briefly before we wrap. Yeah, I mean, I also you know if you're if if <laughs> man, I, like I said, man, it's just there's so much like uh, mega church red flags. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I feel like I genuinely feel like any church where the church. And everything is built around this personality that's on stage. Yeah, is just an, uh, that's it's a red flag, man. Like it, it's, I, 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 any of that. It's, it goes back yeah. to the conversation we had with Ray too. It's like you know what I'm saying. These dudes are pulling up. If if your pastor is is rocking stuff on stage that's more expensive than your life. Yeah, yeah. Like this is an L. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, like, and, the, and to be fair, I don't think all mega churches are like this. I think the vast majority of them aren't like this. It's just when they are like this, it's 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 an FX docu series on Hulu. I would I would say maybe maybe the maybe the majority aren't like this. Yeah. Definitely the majority that I've been to, I think, are yeah are like that. Yeah. I don't not, know. Not 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 like that. Not to the extent you're talking of scandal and gross no, no, financial no, 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 mismanagement. No, no. I'm not I'm not saying all of that. Yeah. I'm talking about uh, just in general should not represent what the church is okay like the, let's, the, let's let's unpack that on the after party yeah let's unpack that on the after party guys uh do me a favor if you enjoyed this destroy that like button uh make sure you subscribe make sure you stick around for the after party if you didn't know we do a full stream ama after party every single day and if you miss those live they get privated and eventually get turned into clips but if you want to watch the full replay of this consider partnering with us for as little as five dollars a month to get these after party plays every day keep us independent never taking a brand deals and making goofy commercials like these our friends at genucel skincare have exciting news to celebrate in 2023 using manscape during my showers after workout has given me much more confidence and that's where mud water comes in true classic has got your pack all thanks to the sponsor of today's video say mine.com established titles is your opportunity to earn the title of Laird or lady. Object credit approval rates range from 7.99% APR to 19.99% APR included 0.50% auto pay discount. If you don't want us to make ads with brands you don't care about, sign up for our online community for as little as $5 a month to keep us independent and ultimately answering to you as our boss. You get all sorts of benefits like daily replays of our after party streams, exclusive access to our Discord community, and early access to our podcast interviews, all starting for only $5 a month. King Stream Entertainment. Bruce